So five things that I want to talk about uh, today. Number one, making your presence known. Number two, really knowing your customers and using some online tools to be able to do that. Number three, being where your customers are. This will be the crux of what we uh, talk about. Uh, being bigger than you are, that goes back to EJ shadow and making sure that that handprint that you're projecting onto the ceiling is as large as it can be. And then finally, a little bit of a wrap up just in terms of what we see happening with moving to the cloud and how that can be of benefit uh, to companies like yours. So first thing, how many people here think they have a good front door to their business online? A good website. I see, I see this happening. This is like the, I think so. You're the guy from Google, so. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Gunshot. So, well, so here's, here's, here's something that I did before. Uh, I spent some time on the majority of each of your sites. I also spent time looking at your AdWords accounts um, and trying to figure out how your strategies have done. And I would say that for the most part, I would, there are probably a few in here that might need to do a little work on the front door, a little touch up maybe. But for the most part, you're doing a pretty good job on this. Think about some of the principles, though. It would be worthwhile to take a look at this in the next couple of weeks just to make sure that you're hitting on all cylinders. Do you have a clean and easy to navigate site? And do you have a clear call to action when people come there? The one challenge, I think, for this group in particular in the tech B2B space is putting too much information on that front door. Because your consumer is not going to know what the heck they need to do, right? You sell some very complex products that are not always easy to communicate in just a couple of lines. They're not as easy to put the Google homepage up and someone knows exactly what they, they need to do. And you just simply need to think about how clear and easy is it to come in that front door. And can you help people navigate once they're, once they're in? Next one. So once you've got that good front door, you need it to be found. And obviously, the example here I'm using is the Google search engine, but this applies to other search engines or other means of finding your website. So um, I actually used some examples in my screenshots of uh, various companies that are in the room. Um, and I think uh, they all show fairly favorably. Um, here, uh, occupational health software, you get a good sense. We've um, got, I think it's Medgate, is that right? That's uh, in it's part of uh, the forum. Showing in the second spot here. Obviously, have done some things well to make sure that they are showing um, positively in the organic search results, right? These are the free listings you don't have to pay for, but you need to make sure that your site is doing well from a uh, layout standpoint, having good links, good references into the site so that you're showing highly uh, in the organic search listings. Finding out information online in terms of who your, your customers are. I'd encourage you if you don't have, uh, I'm guessing that uh, everyone is doing some degree of market research. I just simply want to make you aware of some tools that are available for you to be able to use. So we have one called Insights for Search. Um, it's a free tool. Anyone can go in and use it. I'd encourage you to experiment with it or have your marketing team experiment with it. Um, essentially what you can do is put in search terms. So in this instance, I've put in sales management software and software as a service. I've also selected um, global as my uh, region. And I can essentially get uh, trending for what is happening, uh, for how consumers are looking at uh, this market. So it's just a, a basic example, but a really interesting one in the sense that you see that sales management software, um, as a percentage of all searches, is actually uh, stayed flat to slightly declined, while software as a service has increased. Might be able to tell us some things about what is happening within that market. But you could do this for your type of software, for your specific market. You can even change it, if you're operating globally, to look at, um, at individual markets. So that's, that's available now? Free, yeah. Is that in the Webmaster Tools? It's not in Webmaster Tools. It's just simply a URL. You can type in Google Insights for search. It'll go to the link. Uh, and you can you can play with it. Sorry, what was the, the uh, Google Insight? It just called Insights for Search. Put that into the search box, and it'll give you the link back. I just Google 
Just Google it, yes. Incredibly useful tool. It essentially gives you the same type of data that we have available internally in terms of what the search information uh, shows. Uh, so you can understand what's happening in markets. I've even seen companies use this uh, to understand what type of inventory they should be stocking uh, because they can see if they're selling some type of seasonal product, although that wouldn't apply really in this group, um, whether they should be stocking up on something more than something else, um, or whether they're entering new markets. So understanding what is happening on search in a given market. And that's what you get a little bit of a snapshot of here. Apologies that the, the uh, size is a little bit small. But you can see that by the shading on the upper left-hand side on the map, uh, different amounts of search volume that are occurring in different uh, countries. You can drill that down to the province level um, or even the city level. Uh, and then we give you some other information here in terms of what are rising searches. Um, so this would also be an area that if you're in a developing market or industry, you might be able to see how people are searching for your products or related uh, items. Um, and again, it's just good insight that can complement some of the other market research uh, that you're doing. So to sum up here, the purchase funnel has changed. And you need to know where your customers are within that and design the appropriate tools uh, around it, right? It's no longer TV, it's online video. It's no longer references uh, via phone or from business colleagues. It's through online tools, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, et cetera. Uh, and then finally, in the purchase phase, it's making sure that you have the capabilities to take inbound leads uh, into your businesses. Um, be that over the phone or be that over some type of ordering system uh, online. So you want to make sure that you're able to, to capture what is coming at you in that regard. So the reason that this is important is because people are doing more research. They are spending more time on this. We took a look at that at the beginning. But just to reinforce, every couple of years we go out and do some, some of our own research to understand what the purchase patterns are. So especially during the recent global recession, we noticed about a 20% spike across all industries in terms of the volume of research people are doing before they go in to make a purchase. And this applies to both uh, B2B and B2C uh, companies. So you've got a vast majority of your users, whether they're um, smaller businesses that you're trying to target, larger businesses, people in purchasing departments, CEOs of companies that are all spending on time online making decisions. That's why it's important to be both in the organic as well as the, uh, the search listings. Just to reinforce this, these are just some stats in terms of um, how we break down various markets for search activity. Um, you can see just the top graph. Uh, we classify our B2B searches, 180% increase over the last three years um, in just those searches. And we continue to see that uh, trend upward. This is even a further breakdown. I'm not going to go into all the data, but it's just to give you some confidence that when we take a look at it, uh, even down to the subcategories within B2B, we see a continued um, upward trajectory. It's a reinforcer that this is where people are spending their time and how they're changing their behavior for how they purchase your products. So one other area to think about, search is not the only place that you can find traffic, people, conversions. Uh, et cetera. There are d what we call display networks that are available. We have one, but there are uh, a number of others. This is where you can find people higher in that search funnel um, to be able to get your ads, whether they're text-based ads or whether they're display ads, which I'll give you a, a snippet of in just a, just a second. But this is actually another strategy that you can use to be able to find more traffic. Um, things that you might be thinking about here, you have the ability to advertise on major news sites, industry um, uh, websites, uh, review sites, blogs, etc. And oftentimes we find that there are very specific sites for your industries that will convert very well. Because that's where someone will be going to do a review of a given system or to read more about a given area, etc. You won't find the traffic that you would find if you were in a B2C type market on those sites. But 
we actually find very good conversion rates, um, oftentimes uh, by going to display um, for B2B markets. This just gives you a range of what that is. That, that, it runs from Google-owned properties to um, the sweet spot here are really uh, pages across the web um, that we also run products to serve ads onto those sites. Um, so it gives you, again, great reach, right? This is going back to, to EJ and the size of that handprint that he's able to project. And being able to have tremendous reach, whether that's across Canada, whether that's across the globe. Um, and being able to do that with a very small team as well, because it's not complicated to run. And then finally, we put in there YouTube, uh, because that's one of our properties, and we have the ability to have that within our network and to be able to, to serve ads. And more on that uh, in just a second. The whole idea here is that it gives you an, a different venue to be interactive with the customers that you are trying to find. So this is just one example. You see in the upper left the original display ad from AT&T uh, back in 1994, uh, all the way down to a recent ad that uh, Rogers ran. Very interactive, very customized. <coughs> this is a space to watch because the technology here is changing daily in terms of what the opportunities are. So very soon you'll have the ability to be able to customize this and put a different background on that, um, that display ad based on what the weather is like in someone's uh, part of the country. Uh, or to change the graphic based on what a user profile uh, might look at and become very customized. So if you're not taking advantage of this, there is a big opportunity out there to at least be more targeted in terms of trying to find more customers. Because if you go back to the time people are spending online, they're not spending a ton of time on search. Search is a place where they go to find something and then move off. That's 60 hours a week uh, or a month that Canadians are spending online are on sites where you can target through uh, display advertising. And the same thing holds in other countries, whether that's the US or whether that's uh, global. So you want to make sure that you're trying to reach cons consumers where they are. A couple of side notes if you are running here, you're going to see much higher uh, impressions being given than on search and lower click-through rates, but that's normal because this is higher in the uh, purchasing funnel. And then a couple of others that you need to think about. Mobile. We talked about that earlier. Mobile is on an incredible trajectory right now. This should just give you a quick snapshot. This is just one category that we track in terms of <coughs> uh, growth for mobile searches, but this is consistent across B2B and B2C. Stunning overall growth. Um, and you can do the same thing to make sure that you are running your campaigns to reach consumers uh, when they are searching for your products uh, or looking across the web on mobile devices, be that phones, pads, uh, et cetera. The final one that I'll close with uh, is a company called BizTree. They work with us. Um, they've authorized us to talk about their story. Uh, they're located uh, in Montreal. They are a software company that started uh, <clears throat> in, about seven or eight years ago. Um, as they were getting started, uh, they went to the bank, asked for $25,000 so they could develop some marketing and sales. They put half of that into uh, vehicles um, like traditional print, et cetera, and half of it into AdWords. And their AdWords return gave them two to three times return off of what they invested. They went back to the bank, borrowed another 100000 and the market just keeps growing. They now publicly say that they invest well over $100,000 a month with us, that they've got uh, 2 million users uh, for their install base, uh, and that they continue to, to grow. I know these guys personally. I work with them uh, directly. Uh, they have really built their business through online marketing, both through AdWords and then also through um, other companies. Uh, they now operate in eight countries, um, multiple languages. Uh, they have really been able to scale. And they are a company of 30 people, essentially, or 35 people. So I give that to you because this is a company that was able to find where their users were. Uh, this wasn't a w terribly well-defined market necessarily, but they were able to reach people because of the scale that they get uh, through online and having a great presence. Uh, through us and then through other uh, online tools. So think about that uh, shadow that you're leaving. Think about how big your handprint is out there. You've got the tools at your uh, fingertips to be able to do that.